Have you ever thought, could my diagnosis be wrong? Or did you ever think, could something else be causing the symptoms of my patient? Today in this video, we will be talking about uncertainty in medicine. Let's say a patient comes to your clinic, the viewer, as a doctor. The patient tells you that he has a sore throat and it hurts. So you tell him to come over and open his mouth and say, ah, and he says, ah, and you put the tongue depressor in his mouth and you depress the tongue and push it down. So you push it down and you use the light and you see exudates on the tonsils. Now, the question is, what's the diagnosis? Is it strep throat and does he need antibiotics? Now, because medical examples are often abstract and difficult to relate to, we'll start from a real-world example, and then we'll go back to medicine. I would like to thank our VIP again, Thinking Fast and Slow. All right, guys, so this is the taxi problem brought to you from the book Thinking Fast and Slow. Let's read it together, and then we will see how it is relevant to medicine. It says, a taxi was involved in a hit-and-run accident at night, so someone got run over by a car, and the car escaped. There are two taxi companies in the city, the yellow taxi company and the black taxi company. You are given the following data. It says, 85% of the taxis in the city are yellow taxi, and 15% which are the leftover, 15% are black taxi. A witness identified the taxi as a black taxi. The court tested the reliability of the witness under the circumstances that existed at the night of the accident, and they concluded that the witness correctly identified each of the cars 80% of the time, and failed 20% of the time. The question now is, what is the probability that the taxi involved in the accident was black? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. All right, so you probably gave an answer, and I'm not sure what it is. You may have answered 80%, you may have answered something more or less. But let's now analyze the question and think how can we solve it? You probably did not think of this, and if you did, then congratulations, because this is really the correct method to solve this problem. It is the cross-tabulations table. The table that shows you the true and false positives and negatives. There is always a false positive and negative, and this is the way to solve it. If we think about it, really, there is a truth, a reality, that the majority are yellow taxis in the city, and the minority are black taxis. And if you think logically about it, that a taxi run over someone at night, we don't know what it is. But if you just had to make a random guess, your best guess actually would guess that the yellow taxi is more likely to have run over that person in that accident. Why? Because it is simply the majority of taxis. So because 85% of taxis in the city are yellow, and assuming that both taxi companies, you know, they are equally skilled in driving and such, then most likely the yellow taxis will account for 85% of the accidents in the city. This is called the base rate. The base rate means it is the default assumption that you make when you don't have any other information. Now, what the witness said he observed when they tested him, he was 80% accurate. So let's now make the cross tabs. Let's analyze it by this same table. If we ask this observer, this witness, what did you observe? So out of these 85 cars, he will identify 80% of them as yellow. So let's do it. Multiply 0 0.8 times 85. You will get 68. So he identified 68 cars as being yellow. What about the rest? Let's take a look. The rest, which is 20% of 85, he identified them as being black taxis. So there are 85 cars. He said that 68 cars, which is 80%, they were yellow. 17 cars, which are left over, he actually identified them falsely as being black taxis. So there is a false positive. Let's apply the same thing now to the black taxis. If we have 15 black taxis, 
How many of them will he identify as being black? So he will say that 80% of them were black. So multiply 0 0.8 times 15 and you will get 12. And then the leftover 20%, they, they will be identified as yellow taxis. So the same thing that we applied here is we multiply 80 by this and then we got this answer. The same thing, we multiply 0 0.8 times 15 and we will get 12 and the 20% that is left is 3. So we get this beautiful table. There are black cars, black taxis, which he called out being black. So these are the true positives. And there are yellow taxis, which he said that they were black. So if we add these two numbers together, 17 plus 12, we will get 29. He said that he saw a black taxi, so there are 29 cars. But what is the probability that it is really black? And we will take this number, it is 12, because these are the black taxis which he identified. Let's divide now 12 by 29, and it is 0 0.41, 41%. So this is really the true probability of the witness being correct in his claim in court. Now to answer the question, does he have strep throat and should we give him antibiotics? So can we now tell what's the probability that he has strep throat? Actually not yet, because there is information missing. Remember in the taxi problem, we had three pieces of information. We had the reliability, the sensitivity and specificity of the witness, which is 80% and 20%, you know, what he saw. And we had the base rates for the taxis. So 85% of taxis were yellow and 15% were black. So let's ask, ask the same question for sore throat. What's the prevalence of strep as the cause of sore throats? The literature says that it is 30%. So out of 100 people with a sore throat, painful throats, only 30% will have strep as the cause of their pharyngitis. So the prevalence of group A strep amongst other causes it is 30% approximately. We need to know the reliability of our own clinical examination. It is frequently said in the books and taught also that exudates are more frequent in bacterial pharyngitis, and this is true. So the sensitivity of exudates for strep throat is 40%, and the specificity is 80. So now let's start doing the calculations. There is pharyngitis, it can either be strep throat or other organisms, whether we are talking about viruses or other bacteria. Out of 100 cases of pharyngitis, 30 will be strep and 70 will be others. Of course, pharyngitis, this is, we are judging it by the golden standard, which is the throat culture. If we have 30 people with strep throat, how many of them will have exudates? We will use the sensitivity for this. So 40% of 30, so 0.4, times 30 is 12 and the leftovers it is 18 so out of 30 people with strep throat 12 will have exudates on their tonsils and the rest will not well what about other causes we will need to use the specificity here so the specificity is 80 so multiply 0 0.8 times 70 you will get 56 the rest are 14, they will have exudates. So what does that mean? It means that out of 70 people which do not have strep throat, they have other causes. 56 of them, they will not have exudates. But the rest, still 14 people, will still have exudates even though they do not have strep throat. So now let's ask the question. Given that our patient has exudates and a sore throat, what is the probability that he has strep throat? Let's add them. 12 plus 14, it's 26. So 26 people will have exudates, but how many of them are strep? So divide 12 by 26. 12 divided by 26 gives us 46. So the actual probability of our patient having strep throat is only 46%. So by baseline, it was 30%. Because this is the prevalence, we, this is by a simple guess. 
But after knowing that he had exudates, the probability increased from 30% to 46%. Okay guys, so after finishing these two examples, the taxi problem and the pharyngitis problem, we find that our initial thoughts or predictions may be inaccurate. We may inflate the true probability of something happening. In the first example of the taxi problem, some people may think that the chance that the witness is correct is 80, but the reality is much less than that. And similarly for pharyngitis, we may be too confident in thinking that the causative organism is strep and that we need to give amoxicillin. But when doing the math, it really shows that the probability is much lower than that. It is almost impossible to differentiate between a bacterial and a viral cause for something, for example, like pharyngitis. And it is necessary at that point to use specific investigations such as a throat culture or a rapid strep test. And this brings us now to the topic of clinical prediction rules, CPRs, where we use specific algorithms to decide when to order a test or when not to based on clinical symptoms and specific criteria. Today I'm not supposed to talk about pharyngitis itself. I'm not going to explain the center or McIsaac scores because this is not the topic today. What I wanted to introduce was the idea that clinical judgment and observation alone is often not enough and we need specific guidelines to guide us. What I explained today is called base rate neglect where a person may ignore the baseline probabilities when he's given a specific piece of information. For example, in the case of pharyngitis, after knowing that he has exudates, I may think that I'm 90% sure that he has strep and I need to give him amoxicillin. So if I say it's 90%, I'm neglecting the baseline probability of him having strep throat, which is 30%. So it's not going to increase from 30 to 90%. This is called base rate neglect. You are forgetting the baseline. So base rate neglect actually sometimes can be used on purpose by clinicians to ignore the base rate to rule out rare but dangerous diagnoses such as a dissecting aortic aneurysm. A clinician may just go for uh, an ultrasound or for example a CT angiogram just to rule out that diagnosis. But also on the other hand sometimes it can lead the clinician to be overconfident in his judgment and the probabilities of his own diagnosis. So what can we do to be more conscious of our errors in base rate neglect? Number one, we should always remember the sensitivity and specificity because they are important, but also never forget the prevalence of a specific disease or diagnosis and the base rate. So not just say this test is sensitive or specific, but also think how frequent is that disease that I'm looking for. That's number one. Number two is to remember to use clinical prediction rules and guidelines because they guide us through the process of diagnosing our patients. So I hope this video taught you something new about base rate neglect and the statistics of clinical practice. If it did, please like the video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on evidence-based medicine. And let me know if anything you think of in the comments section below.